BTEC Applied Science, Unit 3, Skills, Tables and Graphs. How do you do a proper table? How do you plot a graph? Also, how do you get the gradient from a graph? Uh, consider this. You're going to carry out an experiment uh, looking at the reaction between magnesium ribbon and dilute acid. So you're going to put bits of magnesium in acid and you're going to collect the amount of gas given off and you're interested in how the rate of reaction varies with time and you carry out the experiment twice. Okay, now the, this is a standard method for measuring the volume of gas produced. Okay, it's called a displacement met, uh, method. You should definitely be familiar with it, be able to sketch it. You could always use something called a gas syringe, but they're expensive and they're very fiddly to use. Um, and usually we don't need to be that accurate. Uh, the displacement method works perfectly well. So here's a table. Okay, in the exam, you'll be asked to draw a table of your results. You'll have to carry out an experiment before the exam and you'll be asked to draw a table of your results in the exam. Uh, draw a neat table using a ruler Make sure you bring a ruler in. Uh, column headings, you have to include units. I've got the time in minutes. I've got the volume of gas in centimetres cubed or millilitres. Don't forget units. Uh, be consistent in how many decimal places you use. Okay, uh, it's up to you how many you use, but use a sensible number. It depends on the actual value of your readings. It's more important how many significant figures there are. But be, be kind of consistent and sensible in your use of decimal places. Uh, and notice, if you look at the numbers, notice that I've identified an anomaly. Clearly that 20, I've drawn a circle around it, uh, doesn't fit. It's an anomaly. And when I work out the mean, I ignore the anomaly. You don't have to have an anomaly, by the way, but if there is one there, that's what you would do with it. OK, so how do you plot a graph? Uh, the first thing you do is draw your axes. So with a ruler, nice, neat, two lines, whoosh, whoosh, X axis, Y axis. Uh, leave room for your labels and units. Then look at the maximum and minimum values of uh, the values, the variables on each axis, and then decide on a suitable scale. For example, at the bottom there, my time is from 0 to 6 minutes. Uh, on the y-axis, the volume is from 0 to 40 centimetres cubed. So a bit of common sense, and I've come up with that. Uh, the rule is, as long as you use most of the graph paper, then it's okay. OK, it's a suitable scale as long as you use most of the graph paper. So from 0 to 6 at the bottom, uh, from 0 to 40 on the side. Plot your points carefully. They will be checked. You know, you plot your points in the exam or in coursework and whoever the examiner will check that you've plotted them correctly. So don't fiddle it. Uh, they're called points, but we actually draw an X. We don't draw a point, we draw an X. Then uh, you do a line of best fit, or it could be a straight line of best fit, or it could be a curve, as I've drawn here. It doesn't have to go through all of the points. It should be as close as possible to as many as possible. One little rule I say is that you don't have to go through all the points, but there should be the same number of points above the curve as below the curve. OK, so notice also that I've labelled my axes with units and we're just about there. And I've given it a title as well. Volume of gas against time for enzyme experiment. Don't write a graph to show. We know it's a graph. To calculate the rate of reaction, uh, what you do at a certain time is draw a point on the graph and then you draw a tangent. Draw a tangent and then what's the gradient of the tangent? 
and the gradient of the ta tangent is the change in the y value which is the change in the volume of gas divided by the change in time the change in the x value that's delta y over delta x that's the gradient of the graph do a big triangle don't do a pathetic titchy little thing the bigger the triangle is the more accurate your answer will be and when you've worked out the gradient don't forget to put units on it okay uh, what I've actually done here is I've worked out the rate of reaction at a point in time at that point in time at three minutes that is the rate of reaction what I could have done was work out the average rate of reaction in the first three minutes and that would be the volume of gas 32.5 divided by 3 okay that would tell me the average rate of reaction in the first three minutes if you get the gradient you're actually getting the rate of reaction at an instant at a point in time if you are doing an experiment to see the effect of changing now uh, this apparatus here be able to sketch it learn it the concentration of the acid the amount of magnesium the temperature okay now you really just need to measure the volume after a certain time and then work out the average rate of reaction you don't need to take lots and lots of readings of volume against time if you're changing the concentration of the acid just measure how much gas is produced in a couple of minutes. I mean, you can always do a preliminary, a practice experiment to see if that's a suitable time, but you don't need to take lots and lots of readings of volume. Just one reading of volume after a certain time will tell you what you need to know, okay? Uh, you don't need to plot graphs of volume against time. You would plot a graph of the rate of reaction against concentration or temperature and then the rate of reaction is the volume after two minutes divided by two 